When the image is selected, you'll see green squares around each corner and each side. You can drag those squares to resize the image. If I drag a side, you see that it's distorted the image. It's changed the width, but it has not changed the height of the image. Same thing with the ones at the top and bottom. If I click and drag that to make it shorter, it changed the height without changing the width. Your image will be distorted if you only drag the sides or the top or bottom. To resize the image proportionally, click one of the corner squares. So if I click that and drag, you see it's maintaining the same proportion of the image. I'm going to go ahead and insert the last image in the file image 26. This time I'll use the toolbar, insert image. Computers don't resize image larger as effectively as they do in reducing the size, but I'll go ahead and increase this a little. If you go too large, you'll get what's called a pixelated image where you'll begin to see the actual dots that create the image. That doesn't look too bad though. When you hover over the image, you'll see the cursor turn into these four arrows. That indicates that you can drag the image and move it around on the page. And notice that the text is adjusting to wrap around the image based on where I place it. When an image is selected, the image toolbar will be displayed. And that will disappear when you click off of the image that goes back to the formatting toolbar since we're in the text area. Just click an image to select it. The image toolbar reappears. Notice that in terms of alignment, this icon optimal page wrap is selected. That's controlling how the text wraps around the image. The first icon turns that wrapping off and that places the image on a line all by itself. We could center that image using the center alignment icon. The wrap through icon puts the image right over the text. Right click the image and select properties. In the options tab, you can assign a name to the image. I'll just call that one image 26 and I will go up to the top. For the cover image, I'll right click it, select properties, options, and I'll call this cover. If we pull out the sidebar and go to the navigator, remember how we could go to any of our headings in a previous session? Now, since we've added images, those are displayed in the image section. It will use the names that you added in that properties dialog and you can double click any image to go directly to that location in the file. There's our last image and I can double click the cover to go to the beginning of the file where that image is located. If you don't name the images in the properties option, it will use generic names here and it will make it difficult to tell what each image represents. So it's a good idea to assign a name to each graphic that you insert. Another way you can insert images into a writer document is simply to drag and drop them. I'll insert this illustration number one here. I have my folder open with all the images in it. Simply select the one that you want to use, click and drag it, and as you go in the document, you'll see that cursor and that will indicate where the image will be placed. When you have that where you want it, just release the mouse button and the image will appear. You can click and drag it and move it over wherever you would like to place it. Another way you can insert images is by copying and pasting. So if I have one of the illustrations open in another program that allows me to copy I can copy that image. And this might be a graphics editor or some other program. And then in Writer, you go to the location where you want to place the image and do a paste. 
that shows the bitmap option. It's inserted it at a larger size than by using the other technique, but you can always use your green sizing squares there to resize it to any size that you would like. Become familiar with all three of those ways to insert images. The toolbar icon and the insert menu are basically the same thing. And then you have the drag and drop and copy and paste.